Welcome, you're watching Head to Head, I'm Antonina Antosha with UATV. Open data is a valuable resource that can surely strengthen the digital and real economy of Ukraine. It also contributes a great deal to the economic growth within the country. The first and so far the only research of the open data on Ukraine's economic potential has been conducted by Kyiv School of Economy. To tell us more about the results of the research, we're joined in the studio today by Richard Sterling. He's an expert at Open Data Institute. Hello and thank you for coming. Hi, thank you. So tell us about the research. So as you said, this is the first research into yes. the economic potential of open data. That's data that's shared for everybody to work with. It's mm -hmm. a real resource for innovation. And the research has found that there's already $700 million uh, US mm -hmm. of activity going on in Ukraine based on that open data. Mm -hmm. So 700,000? 700, 700, 700 million. million. What kind of activities could those be connected to open data that brings so much money to the economy of Ukraine? So there's two types of activity that get that are covered by that 700 million. There's uh, businesses that are based on that open data directly. Mm -hmm. So they're companies uh, For like... For example, what kind of business could that be? Oh, that, there's a company um, called uh, Texty who uh, take the data, analyze it, and then um, have present the results afterwards. Mm -hmm. But there are also companies like logistics companies who use open data provided by government mm -hmm. to help them move goods uh, more efficiently around the country. Mm -hmm. Or for uh, a retailer who helps them get, as you get the right goods on the shelves uh, that meet the demographics of the people who live there. Mm -hmm. Apart from the economics part, how, um, how often do uh, Ukrainian citizens actually use this open data material? Because from what I see, a lot of people are just not used to being presented with such an opportunity. What does your research show? So you're, you're right in that lots of people don't go, oh, you know what I'm going to do today? I'm going to use some open data. Yeah. Instead, what they do is they use services that um, are powered by it. Uh -huh. So uh, in a business context, for example, uh, you might use the data that's published by the Ministry of Finance mm -hmm. on whether the company you're doing business with has paid their taxes, because mm -hmm. that gives you a sense as to whether or not they have uh, the money to pay their bills. In general, it, what would open data resources give to Ukrainians? To like an average citizen? To an average citizen, then I would say it brings, uh, opens up new um, services to them. Um, it enables them to see <clears throat> What's, uh, what's going on around them. It enables them to uh, enjoy some of the, the services that people have in other countries as mm -hmm. well, because data is underpinning so many more services in, in life now. And people have shifted from uh, expecting everything to be delivered for, at their local shop to more and more things being done online. Mm -hmm. All of those sorts of services are, are powered by data. There are a number of uh, data sources that are particularly valuable um, because you know, everything happens somewhere. So location is like a really valuable... So location is, of, the, is yeah, the core thing. Exactly. Uh -huh, okay. And uh, you can't build those services without having the data. So that's why the open data is uh, quite so valuable because it's a shared resource for everybody mm -hmm. to use. And so it's much easier for the innovation to come through. What is the experience of other countries using open data sources? So I uh, chair the Open Data Charter, which is a global group of uh, governments and people who work with the data mm -hmm. coming together to set those standards. And my experience of working with other countries is that once the data is open, so you start seeing the, 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 new, the innovation come through. So, for example, in Mexico... We need a bright... In Mexico... Okay, we need a bright example of this. <laughs> in Mexico, then, uh, people were doing uh, smart billboards mm -hmm. um, based on some of the data that was published by the Mexican government around uh, their demographics. What, a social ad or something? Uh, yeah. Okay. Social, social ads and also um, commercial. Mm -hmm. Like, they, they used it as a, a sort of point of difference with mm -hmm. the incumbents. Mm -hmm. Then, uh, in the UK, then we created, or there was a, we opened up a lot of the information around transport mm -hmm. in London. And before the data was open, 
then there was one pretty rubbish app that told you uh, how to get from A to B using public transport. Mm -hmm. The data was opened and within a month there were 140. Hmm. One, of those, okay. one of those is now a, a global business that operates in 25 different uh, countries and has a market value of somewhere between about 100 and 200 million uh, pounds. So, so basically, what you've just described is what Ukraine should be aiming at, right? Should be waiting mm. for and striving for. Is at least something like that already happening in Kiev? I want to know. I live in Kiev. <laughs> <laughs> so I think that uh, Ukraine's doing pretty well. Uh, one of the things that comes out in the research is some benchmarking against Europe. Mm -hmm. And uh, three years ago, then the benchmark would have said that you weren't doing very well by European standards. Now you're at the standard of um, the sort of average country mm -hmm. within Europe, but you're accelerating quite quickly. So I think that you can strive to be one of the best countries in Europe. And all of that is thanks to open data? Yeah, this is against a European, uh, the open data benchmark in wow. Europe. And uh, with that, I think, comes a great opportunity for building the digital economy in Kiev and in Ukraine, mm -hmm. because you have very good technologists. Uh, you have some of the best technologists in Europe uh, are trained in Ukraine. You have uh, data starting to come through because of the efforts of your government. And you have the European market on your doorstep. Mm -hmm. And you're already the data and the technology is already operating to European standards. Often. Combining open data and technology, could you say that this combination is would be like um, a breakthrough for creating jobs in Ukraine? Because clearly the labor market in Ukraine is kind of humbling right now. So I think it will create uh, high value jobs within Ukraine. Mm -hmm. I don't or could it be, excuse me, could it be just um, a greater opportunity for opening private businesses? So I think it will create both. Um, mm -hmm. I think it will create high value jobs in the technology sector, uh, supporting mm -hmm. uh, innovation here and mm -hmm. development here, rather than uh, have people move to uh, other countries. I also think that um, a lot of the, open, the data that you're opening up will give more legal certainty because a lot of the data that's being opened up is data from the Ministry of Justice, from the Ministry of Finance. And if you look at the ease of doing business rankings, uh, then the bit which requires a bit of improvement mm -hmm. is around uh, certainty. And, you, and transparency, and tr probably? Uh, yeah, yeah, it is. Certainty, yeah. <laughs> transparency, and a bit uh, on anti-corruption. OK, um, how open is this open data? Yeah, I'd say it was pretty open. I mean, it's uh, the data is published under a, an, an open license. So mm -hmm. it's published under a, a license that says that people can use it. Mm -hmm. It's published, uh, it's, a lot of the data is published quite frequently. So you can see the integrity of what mm -hmm. you're working with. Mm -hmm. And you can check it against um, what's actually happening. So you can check it against reality. Oh, well, I've tried to check Mm -hmm. And I, I was watching, like I looked up one of the ministry's websites, and the thing that uh, I was interested in the most wasn't open data. Yeah. It was like the budget for like the, the spending or something mm -hmm. like that. I, I wanted to know how much money is spent on a particular project, and I didn't get this information. Yeah. So that's why I asked how <laughs> open is this open data? Because, like, for example, if you're trying to find uh, the level of salaries of our ministers, you would never find that, even yeah. though there should be open data. Am I right? But that's, but that's, a, that's a different question. So there's a, the, the data that is open, how open is it? Great. Mm -hmm. Is there more stuff that can be done? Absolutely. Like this. Like what? Um, Comparing so, to the experience of other countries. So, if I was to compare with the UK, then uh, the two data points that you just mentioned, mm -hmm. like detailed information as to what is spent mm -hmm. and uh, the salaries of our ministers, mm -hmm. both of those things would be open. Are they open in the UK? Yes. Okay, Ukraine uh, should be so aiming at in, that. In the UK, every uh, piece of spending over £500, uh, the line items. Mm hmm is open. Good. Um, what is uh, still tricky is if you wanted to look at a specific project, um, but that's partly because of the way that government finances are broken down. Mm -hmm.
All right, now uh, on not so on the not so bright side, like of course, open data is a positive trend and it contributes a lot to the economical growth of Ukraine. What are the mm -hmm. negative sides? So the, I wouldn't say it's negative sides of uh, open data per se, but there are um, things to bear in mind when you're looking working with data. Like what? So personal privacy. Yes. I mean, if you followed the uh, the problems with Facebook uh, is facing in yeah. the US, yeah, 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 yeah. then there's there's some really interesting questions about how data is held in the economy and what you do with it. Mm -hmm. And I think that uh, it's incumbent on businesses and on government to okay. think about how it holds its data and also to think about what personal privacy means and how to make the trade-offs between individual uh, data that's held and societal benefit. So on healthcare, for example, mm -hmm. how can you use the fact that we have uh, data on, on medical records to help researching uh, cures for diseases mm -hmm. without uh, betraying personal privacy. And that's a tricky that's thing. A question. And it's uh, something that people are working through now. And I don't think any country has the right answer. And I also think it's something that will vary from country to country mm -hmm. because personal privacy in the UK is different to the US, is different to Japan, oh, is different to Ukraine. Yes, because it I goes. Agree to that sense of self. Well, hopefully this is the only negative side that could be found <laughs> in our open data information. Thank you so much for coming and sharing this with us and our audience. That was Richard Sterling. He's an expert at Open Data Institute. Thank you so much for watching. Stay tuned with UATV.